now in this video we will learn how to write down the design module and test bench for jk flip-flop and t flip-flop using behavioral modeling in verilog hdl we will design first the jk flip-flop which is positive as triggered and with a asynchronous reset we have already discussed that reset can be asynchronous or synchronous in our previous video when we designed and simulated b flip-flop let us recall what is meant by asynchronous reset Asynchronous reset means that our circuit should reset whenever the reset signal is active and it is independent of the clock. So the clock may be anything, it can be high or it can be low. If the reset signal becomes active, then our circuit should reset. So this is the block diagram of a JK flip-flop, which we have to realize using behavioral modeling in Verilog HDL. This is the truth table of JK flip-flop. So we all, all are familiar with this truth table. When J and K is 0, there is no change. If J is 0, K is 1, Q is 0. If J is 1, K is 0, then Q should be high. And when both J and K are high, then our output should be local. So let us see how we can realize it using Verilog. We are trying to see how we can write down the design module for the JK flip-flop, which is positive edge triggered. And it has asynchronous reset, which is FL. The first line will be this. We all know why it is like this. We'll declare all the input ports. From the figure, it is clear that the input ports are J, K, clock, and reset. The output is Q. Then, since Q is the output over here and we are using the behavioral modeling, so Q should be declared as a register type. Then comes the always. And in the always, we have to pass the sensitivity list. And in the sensitivity list, we'll have the clock. And before clock, we have to put pause it because we have to design the positive edge trigger flip flop. Along with this, we have to pass the reset signal also in the sensitivity list because the reset signal is asynchronous. This we discussed before also in detail when we designed the deep flip flop. And that whenever the reset signal is asynchronous, then we have to put that reset in the sensitivity list. If the reset signal is synchronous, then we don't have to put this reset signal in the sensitivity list. So remember this always, if the reset signal is asynchronous, put it in the sensitivity list. If it is synchronous, then remove it from the sensitivity list over here. Then we want that if the reset signal is low, then our output should be equal to zero. So this is how we are getting it. But if the reset signal is high, then it should work like an ordinary flip-flop. So in order to do that, we are realizing that part using else. And within the else, we are using the case structure. And let us look at the code first, and then we'll try to understand this. So this is the code. And using this case structure, what we are doing is we are realizing this truth table. So let us see how we are realizing this truth table one by one. In the case structure, we are using this concatenation operator and we know how this concatenation operator works. It will concatenate the two bits J and K and they will be concatenated. Each J and K is a one bit. So when we concatenate two one bit number, then we'll get a two bit number. So we'll get this J and K will be concatenated like this. So over here, the first row, we want that when J is 0, K is 0, there should be no change. So how we are getting it? We are realizing it using this particular statement. So when J is 0, this first bit refers to J and the second bit refers to K. So when J is 0, K is 0, we don't want any change in Q. So we are putting this assignment statement. In the second row, when J is 0, K is 1, then Q should be equal to 0. How we are getting it? We are getting it from the second statement over here. We are putting 2B. 0, 1. Because j is 0 and k is 1, then q should be 0. Third row when j is 1 and k is 0, q should be equal to 1. So we are getting it from the third statement. Over here, by mistake, I put uh, this apostrophe sign. So this has to be removed. So please omit this apostrophe. It should not be there. Otherwise, you get an error in the program. Then the last row of the truth table says when both j and k are high, then it should toggle. And we are getting it from this particular last statement over here. So we see that the entire truth table has been realized using this case structure. Then we have to terminate the case with the end case, begin with this end, and module also has to be terminated with the end module. So this is how we can write down the design module for the JK flip-flop. Now let us see how we can write down the design module for, say, different configuration of a JK flip-flop. So for example, 
if you have to design a JK flip flop which is negative edge trigger, then what we have to do? We have to just replace this pause edge with the neck edge. If the reset signal becomes synchronous, then you have to remove this from the sensitivity list. The remaining code will remain the same. If the reset signal becomes active high, then what we have to do is we have to simply change over here this condition. So instead of putting reset equal to 0 over here, we have to replace this, this with 1B1. Then the reset signal will become active high. So with these minor modifications, you can design a JK flip flop any given configuration provided you have understood the concept. Most uh, part of the code remains the same and with the minor changes you can design a flip-flop of any given configuration. So we have learned how to write down the design module. Once we have written down the design module we have to test it whether it is working perfectly or not and for that we know that we have to write down the test bench or the stimulus. So let us move ahead and see how we can write down the test bench for the JK flip-flop. So we'll start with this then we'll declare all the input ports as a register type, all the outputs as a wire type, instantiate. Then within initial begin, we will be initializing the clock and the reset to zero. And then we have to test it for all the possible combinations of J and K. So when J is zero, K is zero, what we should get? We should get output as no change. So our output should not change. After 100 uh, units, then we have to make reset equal to high. And then we are giving other combinations of J and K, then again delay, other combinations. So this is how you can give all the possible combinations of J and K. And you have to see whether your truth table is verified or not. Now, since this uh, flip-flop is a clock-driven device, so we have to design the clock also. We learned in our earlier videos how we can do that. So by making use of this always block, the clock can be generated. So this particular statement will generate a clock of 20 units time period. Uh, and by changing this delay, you can create a clock of any desired time. So this is how you can write down the test bench for the JK flip-flop. This is just a sample which I have given you. But you can make the variations uh, wherever you want to. And you can uh, write your own test bench for uh, different uh, uh, delay times uh, or for different initialization conditions over here. And you can simulate the JK flip-flop. So this is how we can write down the design module and the test bench for JK flip-flop. Now we will learn how we can write down the design module and test bench for the flip-flop, which is positive as triggered and it has synchronous reset. So this is the block diagram of a T flip-flop and this is how the truth table of the T flip-flop looks. When T is zero, there is no change. When T is one, the flip-flop toggles. So this is what we have to realize using the design module. So let us see how we can write down the module, which is for the T flip-flop, which is positive edge triggered, and it has synchronous reset. And the reset signal is active low from the figure. So we'll start with this. We'll declare the input ports. We'll declare the output ports. The port has to be declared as a register type. Then within the always, we have to pass just the pause edge clock as the sensitivity list because the reset signal is synchronous. So I hope now you remember that whenever the reset signal is synchronous, we don't have to pass it in the sensitivity list. And if it is asynchronous only, then it will come here in the sensitivity list. And we are using pause edge clock. Why? Because we have to design the positive edge trigger T flip flop. Within the always block, we know that when the reset signal is zero, what we want, we want that the output should be set to zero and this is how we can do it. Else, if T is one, what we want, we want that the output should toggle and how we can realize that, we can realize that using this tilde operator. Otherwise, we don't want any change and in order to get that, we have to use this assignment state. So, this is the design module for the T flop, which is positive H triggered. If you have to do it for the negative edge record, you may change over here, replace this passage with a negative. If you want to have the asynchronous reset, then put this reset also over here in the sensitivity list. And if the reset signal is active high, then make the change over here, reset double equal to 1B1. So this is how you can make the variations and you can design a tape flip-flop of any given configuration. Now let us write down the test bench for the T flip-flop. The test bench would look like this. Declare all the inputs as a register type, output as a wire type, instantiate the flip-flop, 
then within the initial begin, we have to initialize the clock. We have to make reset equal to zero and we are making t equal to zero also. You can make t one also. Um, that is not necessary that you have to do it as t zero. Then after 100 units, this is important step. You have to make reset high so that it works as a deep flip flop. And then you can change this t value after a certain delay and you can see whether your output matches with the truth table. So when t is one, our output should toggle. When t is zero, our output should remain same. So this is how you can write down the design module and then you have to use the clock also. And for that, we can use the always block. And so this is how you can write down the complete test bench for the table. So now we have both the design module and the test bench ready. This you can simulate in your machines and you can verify the truth tables of the deep flip flops. So we have learned how we can design the deep flip flop using the behavioral modeling in Verilog HDL.